In this video, I'm going to be going over my pros and cons on the new Motorola Moto G Power 5G. Stay tuned. Alright everyone, hopefully you guys are having a good day. Hopefully everyone is safe out there. We have the new Moto G Power 5G 2024 edition right here. And I've had this device for about a week now and uh, I'm just gonna be telling you guys what I like about this device and what I do not like about this device. I'm gonna be doing a full review on this device as well, putting a few more days into this device, but here are my pros and cons thus far. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and start off with the pros first and foremost on this device. The first pro, about this device has to be the loud and clear speakers on this device we actually do have a stereo speaker set up on this device you guys will find a speaker at the bottom of your phone right here and the second speaker is going to be utilized by the headset so even when you're playing video games you're not going to be covering up both speakers for most people so very very loud and clear speakers on here they sound really nice they don't really have any tin or anything like that so very good quality speakers on this device i really do like them so far the second pro about this device is going to be that we have a 30 watt wired charge rate on here which is really good considering that the $450 or $500 Galaxy A55 only has a 25 watt charging rate when wired up so this device has about five more watts inside of it so we do have that turbo power charging on this device which is nice to see and super surprising enough we actually do have 15 watt wireless charging on this device as well so it's really nice to see that we have this on a sub $300 phone. Very, very cool stuff to see on this device. Also something else I thought I'd add on here as well on the pros, considering we have a decent charging rate, we also have a really, really good battery life on this device as well. So the battery life that you guys can expect out of this is probably about a couple days with moderate use realistically. If you guys are constantly playing video games on this and draining your battery throughout the day, I'd say you guys can go on a heavy usage with this device and it should last you about a day but if you're a moderate user of your phone you watch some videos scroll social media text make phone calls all that type of stuff this device realistically should last you a couple days the third pro about this device something that i really like and something that caused a bunch of chaos in my comment section for the unboxing of this phone for whatever reason but the vegan leather or as they call it eco leather i know there's no such thing as vegan leather or whatever it's called it's a nickname it's a nickname y'all but motorola calls this their eco leather and it just honestly feels good it doesn't leave too many fingerprints on it so that's the first reason why i like this but also it's actually pretty grippy so if you guys are prone to having devices that slip like you may have a glass phone like the Galaxy A35, A55, it may slip a lot or you may leave a lot of fingerprints. This is not going to be the case with this device. So I really, really do like this Eco Leather back. I feel like it's not really used on a ton of different phones, especially in 2024. We did see this type of material in the past, but I'm glad that Motorola brought it back on the Moto G Power 2024. It's really nice. It actually looks pretty elegant as well. And for the most part, I think it's a very, very good design language. Our fourth pro is going to be something that I don't think we've seen on a Moto G Power device yet, and that's going to be NFC, as you guys can see right there, we have our Google Wallet, so you guys can put your gym membership in there, put your ID, put your credit cards and debit cards inside of there. Obviously, a lot of people don't want to have that type of stuff on their phone for obvious reasons, but um, it's cool that we have NFC on here to go ahead and use that now. So nice to see NFC finally coming to the Moto G Power 5G in 2024. And my fifth and last pro on this device is going to be the overall performance. For $300, I think the performance is okay. I don't think it's the best in gaming, but for day-to-day -day usage, you know, texting, making calls, watching videos, scrolling the web, all that type of stuff. Um, even playing your light PUBG mobile or Call of Duty mobile and stuff like that, it's pretty decent. It also has eight gigabytes of RAM inside of here. Not the best processor in the world though. It does have the Dimensity 7020 inside of it. So not the craziest processor in the world. It is a newer MediaTek processor, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. But so far, performance has been pretty good. Eight gigabytes of RAM inside of here. Also 128 gigabytes of ventral storage and um, this is the only variant that they have so they don't have a 256 as of yet it's just 128 with 8 gigabytes of ram so 
I don't really see eight gigabytes of RAM a lot in sub $300 devices. So that's something that I like as well on this device. And I think it definitely helps out the performance on this phone. All right, guys, so getting into the cons of the Moto G Power 5G, the first one is gonna be the cameras are lackluster on this device. As you guys know, we do have a dual camera setup right here with our main 50 megapixel camera, as you guys can see. And we actually do have a secondary eight megapixel camera, which is going to be our ultra wide camera. I'm gonna be showing you some samples right here. Here are some of the photos that you guys can expect on this. Um, I don't think they look the greatest in the world. They're fine. I feel like they're passable for a $300 price tag. Um, but you know, when it competes with something like the Pixel 6a that is still going to have OS updates um, until 2025 and security patches till you know, 2027, like, you know, that camera is just leagues above this phone. And even devices like the Galaxy A35 and the Galaxy A15 and stuff like that, they're coming very, very close to this, if not better. Um, and I just think the cameras aren't that great on this device. For the majority of people, especially if you're um, used to using budget phone devices, I think this is going to be totally fine for you. Uh, but if you're someone moving from like a mid-range device to this lower end $300 phone, I don't think it's going to be um, the most beautiful camera in the world for you. So some of you may not like the camera on this and I found it to be a little bit lackluster. Our second con in this device has to be the bezels. I really, really do not like the thick bezel, especially the one at the bottom of the phone right here. It's super, super thick. Um, definitely out of style in 2024. I would have thought this would have been gone and I'm pretty sure they could have done it, but it seems like they try to do this to differentiate between this and their higher end Motorola devices. I think Samsung does the same thing as well, but thick bezels on this phone, top and bottom of the phone. Do not really like that. Super, super ugly looking. Our third con is going to be that the display isn't that great of quality. I mean, it is an IPS display, LCD display, 120 hertz for refresh rate on this, but the refresh rate just doesn't look that great. And also the viewing angles on this display, you can tell it looks like a TFT display, especially when you turn it at certain angles. So if you guys have issues with that type of display, uh, I definitely wouldn't go with this phone. If you want like a super AMOLED display or something like that, this is fine watching videos and stuff like that. It's gonna be totally fine. Most people are going to enjoy it, but I feel like for the people that really, really do want a decent display, this isn't gonna be the display for you. This is a very, very cheaply made display. And I think this was kind of rushed and put inside of the Moto G Power right here. I don't, I don't think this is, a great display at all, honestly. Our fourth con is going to be that we are only promised one operating system update on this device, albeit we do have Android 14 out of the box, but only getting one OS update or getting a promise of one OS update kind of sucks. I'm not sure how the security patches and all that type of stuff are gonna go after this. I'm not sure if they're gonna be supported, but only one OS update on here, guys. Kind of disappointing. And the fifth con on the Moto G Power 5G 2024 is that we do not have any charger inside of this box. Now, I know this is common practice for Apple and Samsung, but this is Motorola right here. And considering that we can use a 30 watt charger on this device, it kind of sucks we don't have one in the box. So we're gonna have to go to amazon.com or eBay or wherever else to the store and pay that extra money for the wall charger inside of there. So that's something that I didn't like about this device. Overall, I think this device is okay. I don't think it's the greatest device in the world, but I think if you want a, a Motorola device, if you absolutely need a Motorola device, I'd still say it's not that great of a device. You know, things like the OnePlus Nord N30, that device, albeit doesn't have the greatest update security patches or OS updates or whatever on it, it definitely has a processor that's twice as good as a better camera. I think it has like 60 watt charging and stuff inside of that, um, as well as the wall charger inside of there as well. So I think that's a better option, but those are my pros and cons on the new Moto G Power 2024. Um, if you guys have your own pros and cons, let me know in the comments section down below. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you make your buying decision on your new device. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, subscribe. And if you want to watch more videos like this, hit the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. This has been Safan from TechRite. Peace out, Tech Gang.